We currently have six members present. We may have a seventh one join us. It will take four votes for majority. As some individuals may be attending this meeting remotely, all parties wishing to be heard, including commission members, are required to state their name prior to speaking in order to ensure accurate minutes. Members of the public, when called upon, are required to state their name and address for the record so we may know who is speaking and be able to contact them at a later date if necessary. If you all could check your phones to make sure they're on mute or off, would appreciate it on that. We will go ahead and start with the first item on the agenda is the minutes of the September 30th, 2021 many minutes. Are there any corrections to the minutes? If there are no corrections, the minutes will stand as presented. Next item on the agenda is CSP 21-002. We need to take a vote on the minutes. No. Oh, no, we don't. Yeah. We need a motion. Here. Oh. I, mo I move to approve the minutes as written. Is there a second? I'll second that. Tom Hutchison. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If no discussion, Kaylee, would you call the roll? Stan Goligoski? Yes. Tom Hutchison? Yes. George Lee? Yes. Butch Tracy? Yes. Ted Gamboji? Yes. Don Michaelman? Yes. The motion passes 6-0. Next item on the agenda, CSP 21-002, Property Owner, Finley Family Properties Limited, Applicant, A and B Sign Company, Inc., a request for the comp Comprehensive Sign Plan Amendment for Finley GMC Dealership on APN 106-08-088B-1008 Commerce Drive. Tammy. Thank you. Good morning, Chairman, members of the Commission. Tammy Duet, Community Planner with the City of Prescott. So back in 2016, there was a comprehensive sign plan approved for this dealership to allow for three freestanding signs and four wall mount signs totaling 278 square feet, which is beyond what they are allowed to have per our sign code. Hence, the way we have the comprehensive sign plan process. Today's request is to t add two new wall mount signs for an additional 152 square feet of signage to replace the temporary directional sign banners they have on the property now. So here's the sign, the sign package, what will, if, if you approve or recommend approval, we'll move forward. So these are the existing signs here for the 310.2 square feet is what they have. And then what they're asking for is for the two new uh, signs, um, they'll be permanent signs, and the, then they'll have a total of 462.2 square feet of signage for that property. Here's the subject property. It's actually these two parcels right here. This is the this dealership's property, and we have it's Commerce and Willow Creek Road. It is zoned industrial light, which allows for the car dealerships. Here's the imagery of the property. So we have the four existing monument signs here along Willow Creek Road, and then we have the three signs, two signs are already on the building. Over here on this side, over here on the side is where the new signs will be going, which aren't very visible from the road. So here's from Google Earth, um, Google Earth from Street View. So we have the one, two, three, four signs that are existing monument. And so back here on this back building back here is where these signs will go, where the uh, banners are now. So here's a picture of one of the signs that's being proposed. And then here's our other sign. Um, they do meet our, our requirements for signage and colors, so there's gonna be no problem getting permitted as long as we get the comprehensive sign plan approved. So um, that concludes my presentation, and I'm free to answer any questions. And Do any commission members have questions of staff? I do. I just wanna make sure, there are currently banners right there, right? I mean, they look, exactly the same and just yes. so the public is aware okay thank you any other questions does the applicant want to make a comment or anything 
No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a motion? Yes, I'll make a motion. Uh, I move to recommend the approval of CSP 21-002, a comprehensive sign plan for the Finley GMC dealership as submitted. We have a motion. Is there a second? Yeah, Tom Hutchison, I'll second it. All right, we have a motion, second. Any further comments? If not, Kaylee, would you call? Stan Goligoski? Yes. Thomas Hutchison? Yes. George Lee? Yes. Butch Tracy? Yes. Ted Gamboji? Yes. Don Michaelman? Yes. The motion passes 6 0. Next on the agenda is REZ21 008, Property Owner Granite Property Investments LLC, Applicant Granite Basin Engineering, a request for a rezoning from RE two acre rural estate two acre to BG Business General to allow for mini storage and commercial facility on APN 106 02 Z. Dash 052C at 5900 Willow Creek Road. And George, you want to make a little presentation before we start this? Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm George Worley. I'm the planning manager for the city. Because both of the items involve a rezoning that are associated with the city's general plan, I want to give you just a little overview of the general plan and the current zoning and the proposed zoning. So this will be in addition to the presentation that Tammy will make next on REZ 21008. And then um, I will follow that after your action on that one with uh, REZ21007. The city originally did a general plan under state guidelines in 2001. Um, it was adopted and formally voted on by the voters in 2003. And that general plan laid out land use that was anticipated for the future. Zoning is land use that's today, and the general plan looks at future land uses. In some cases, the future land uses and the existing land uses were determined to stay the same, and they remain the same in the, the general plan that was adopted. In 2015, the city re-adopted its general plan after a review, taking into account minor modifications to state law, and more importantly, larger modifications to the existing development pattern in the city. So we've looked at it um, as recently as 2015, and the city's about to kick off another general plan review and update, um, probably sometime in the coming year, in order to do the same thing we did then, look at the development patterns and look at uh, all those impacts on development. In this particular case, what we're looking at are properties along here. This is Willow Creek Road, Pioneer Parkway, 89A. This is the Pinion Oaks neighborhood. And then as we go further south, there are a number of other commercial uses, um, including a, a larger commercial ar area here. And uh, then these designated uses that are mostly still residential um, in zoning today. The south end of that area was rezoned to commercial some time ago to allow for commercial uses on those two larger properties. The remainder of that strip is still um, currently zoned residential. Just to zoom in a little bit better, there are two rezoning requests for you today. One is here. That will be the first one you hear. The second one is here. This is the main entrance to Pinion Oaks off of Willow Creek Road. Each of those areas are designated in the general plan to be commercial properties primarily because of Willow Creek Road. The volume of traffic on Willow Creek Road does not lend itself to residential development immediately adjacent to it. Commercial development is appropriate adjacent to high volume streets. And even in 2001, we knew Willow Creek Road would become a high volume street with the completion of 89A and its connection to Pioneer Parkway. So the designation in the general plan is commercial. You can see there are two types of commercial designations. Um, the general commercial, which basically allows for most of our commercial uses, and then commercial employment, which allows for industrial uses as well. So some industrial uses, heavier uses, auto dealerships may fall into that category. 
general commercial uses would fall under the general commercial category. This is from the Central Yavapai Metropolitan Planning Organization's 2017 data. Um, I could not come up with their more recent data at this point. Um, the numbers are the numbers of vehicles that pass that particular location in thousands each day. So at the point where the red arrow is pointing, which is the entrance to Pinion Oaks, 25,000 cars a day pass that intersection. Um, that, that is three years old. Um, that number could be 30,000 today. Traffic patterns change over time. We redo these traffic counts on a regular basis in order to account for the fact that drivers will change the direction they go. Sometimes 89 is better. Sometimes Little Creek is better. Those numbers change in value. The number we have solidly is 25,000. Again, it could be somewhat higher. The two properties in question are both large undeveloped tracks. They are zoned RE2 acre. That's a very large lot, two acre minimum lot size residential zoning. It's rural estate. Rural is an important part of that. Um, that zoning designation was put in place uh, for properties that were intended to develop in very large lots, typically away from high volume roadways and away from lower density or higher, excuse me, higher density development, like you see in Pinion Oaks. Rural estate two acre is designed to be a rural or agricultural character designation. Um, that, that is the designation's intent. It's intended, again, for those peripheral properties in town that are larger, away from the more urban development patterns, and away from the, the higher volume streets. <coughs> the requests for both of the rezonings today are to Business General. Business General is a district that allows a wide range of uses. Um, to help you with that, in your agenda packet, I copied in the use table, even though I know you have the, the land development code, to make it easy to actually see what those uses are. Um, th they are typically, those districts are typically located on high volume roadways. Collectors or arterial streets are typically very high volume roadways. In this particular case, with Willow Creek Road at 25,000 or more, the business general zoning does make sense from the standpoint of the general plan and the general plan designation was done to, to in anticipation of that volume of traffic on the street. So that doesn't mean that you need to recommend in favor of a rezoning just based on that. There are other considerations that you will hear along the way today, uh, both from staff's presentations and from nearby neighbors. But the general plan's designation of commercial use along that strip is based on the fact that any other use would be inappropriate along that strip. And you cannot render property unusable through zoning. So in this particular case, the city's anticipation has been for years that something commercial will happen there. So that was just to give you a little bit of a heads up, a little bit of information that we can talk about further as we go through each of the projects. Um, again, the idea is to make sure everyone understands the circumstances that we're working from. Um, not a constraint on your decision making, just additional information for your decision making. George, when a city annex land into, from the county into the city, it usually comes in at rural to RE2, doesn't it? It depends on what the property was zoned in the county. And most of the county is? A lot of it's large lot rural zoning because it's used by the county similar to what we use it for. It's kind of a holding zoning. It, it has to have a zoning of some kind. You don't want to give it a zoning that's a higher intensity than the county's current zoning, so you give it one that's equivalent, and often they come in with that RE2 acre designation. And it stays that zoning until, until someone the property asks. owner decides what they want to do with it. Correct. When someone asks and when council takes action to rezone the property, then potentially a change occurs. Here's the subject property in question. This, one, this is the property on the south side of Pinion Oaks Drive. We have Willow Creek Road here, and we have Pioneer Parkway. As you can see, uh, Pinion Oaks, Pinion Oaks in this area is uh, fully developed. And to the south of this property, we do have an existing church. Churches are allowed in a residential zoning district. 
um, with a conditional use permit. And on this southern one here, south of this, we also have another church that was approved um, a few months ago through the Board of Adjustments. So we do, um, we will see be seeing another church on this property. And we haven't had any inquiries about the, any further the properties to the south at this time. Here's a zoning map of the area. As George stated, we do have the commercial business regional on the other side of Willow Creek Road. And as we go further south past this holding zone area, we do have other uh, commercial uses as well as the area where the proposed Banner Hospital is going on the other side of Willow Creek Road. So we are starting to see the commercial development start occur um, in this corridor. <laughs> Here's a picture of the subject property from Willow Creek Road. Um, this is on the south end. As you see, there is an embankment here, um, which limits any access off of Willow Creek Road um, to this property. And here's another one looking like the other direction towards town. It is flatter on the end towards Pinnanooks Road. Then it starts to, um, um, the elevations do change on this property. Here are some other pictures from Willow Creek Road. And here's the site plan that was um, brought forward as part of the application. So right here is Willow Creek Road, and this is Pinion Oaks Drive. Here's where the proposed um, two, it'd be a two-story mini storage building, approximately about 20,000, oh, sorry, 49,000 square feet. And then over here, we have a proposed commercial building, which may have multiple uses. Um, we haven't seen any plans for that yet, um, but this is where the building would go. And the access here would be onto Pinion Oak Drive. Due to this embankment along Willow Creek Road, there is no place where really anybody could access or create an, a safe access. And then our, we do are limiting a lot of new access points onto Willow Creek Road so that all the traffic will be generated down here on this part of Pinion Oaks Drive to come out onto Willow Creek Road on and off. Here's some cross sections that was provided. So right here we have Willow Creek Road and this green line here is I, I put in here to kind of show how the elevations drop. This is the elevations. So as the property is developed, some of this will not be very visible from Willow Creek Road. Um, and then as they get towards where the uh, houses are adjacent to it, there will be a landscape buffer to minimize the impact to the visual impact from the neighbors which is required to, um, per our land development code. So some things that we look at with rezonings is the compatibility to the area. We look at the surrounding zoning and developments, and as we can see, this is in a commercial corridor overlay district. It was designated in our um, general plan as commercial. So we are seeing the commercial development start to happen coming up Willow Creek Road to this intersection. Um, as George said, there's a lot of traffic in this area, so it is gonna be prone to development at some time in the future. Um, our, like I said, our general plan and our commercial corridor overlay do support this type of use. The traffic, they are gonna have to do a traffic impact analysis um, for this project to see if there's gonna be any other improvements required at that intersection with Pin and Oaks and Willow Creek Drive. We have not seen a traffic impact analysis yet, but it will be required prior to any uh, building permits being issued to see if there's gonna be any other requirements for infrastructure uh, for that intersection. Um, there have been talks about a possible, since the, it's how close it is to 89, that intersection, a stoplight would not be sufficient. It's too close. It doesn't meet the requirements with that speed through that area. Um, what has been discussed as a possibility is a, a roundabout at that intersection to keep the traffic moving, but nothing has been put in place or decided at this time until we see a traffic impact analysis for that intersection. Um, as I stated, the commercial corridor overlay does require additional landscaping when it's adjacent to residential. So they are going to have to heavily landscape that um, area adjacent to the residences. And they do have that as a landscape buffer area on their plans. So it will, will meet all the code requirements also for the commercial corridor or district overlay. Um, we did our public notification. We state statutes required so that for our public notification. Notification we only go out 300 feet. For this application, we did go out um, 1,350 square uh, feet out, and this is a buffer. 
And we used this with both out applications. So we made sure to get all of the unit one opinion oaks, figuring it will it will get the word out pretty fast when you do that. So here's our recommendation at recommended actions, um, either to approve or deny the application as presented in substantial conformance with the site plan. So as long as they develop it, they develop it per the site plan with in general conformance, substantial conformance, but basically the same uses and the same layout, then we can move forward with building permits if this is actually if this is approved by city council. And that concludes my presentation and I'm happy to answer any questions and we do have the applicant here too. Thank you, Tammy. Questions for staff? Tom. Yeah, Tammy, could you please clarify for me um, what's the height requirement for business general? 50 feet. 50 feet. Other questions for staff? I got a question when I get back to my <laughs> Tammy, you had a slide that showed elevations and it was one before the slide that said compatibility. Thank you. So the height of the building is? It's going to be two story. I believe it's only about 30 feet. 30 feet? OK, so uh, taking into 30. account the change in elevation, what's the net viewable height from uh, Willow Creek, uh. roughly? Um, depends on which cross section you look at. Um, it could be probably about 20 feet of it, like half of it. Okay. And then from the Pinion Oaks side, their view, how tall would the buildings appear to be? Their size, because it does go down in elevation as you get to the residential. But they are required to have that landscape buffer in which they have on their plans. Okay, thank you. Other questions for staff? Tammy, I have one. When we do a traffic analysis, does that contemplate uh, the potential new property buildings here and what they're doing and so forth? Yes, so what they'll do is they'll take what's being proposed on this property and they'll, they have numbers through the national traffic standards that they have to use for different types of uses. And then they'll take the, the traffic count numbers and hopefully we'll get an updated traffic count on that for that area. And then they do an analysis to see what's going to be required from that as uh, future improvements for that intersection. And if it's going to be able to be phased or if it's required right away due to the traffic numbers. And if there's a possibility of, of another access onto Willow Creek Road. I mean, these are all things that will be looked at with our traffic engineer and working with the applicant on their traffic impact analysis. So before the analysis can be done, we have to have an idea of who's going to be the occupants of the office building. Is that true? Because medical would generate different traffic pattern than uh, an office for an accountant. And we would assume they'd use the highest numbers that are a possibility for those buildings of what they have. Um, that's usually how would they do those traffic impact, the highest and best use of the property. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, Tammy, have we done a traffic analysis to incorporate the impact of adding Banner Hospital? Yes, they did do a traffic impact analysis for that development, hence why there is a traffic signal there. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Other questions? Is the applicant here and want to make a statement? Are they on Zoom? If you are, please raise your hand. We'll be getting to public comment shortly. Okay, I thought they were here. Huh. Kind of hard to ask questions of the applicant if the applicant isn't here. Yes, it is. Um, and they're not on Zoom either, so I'm. I didn't hear from them. Well, let's go to public comments. Unfortunately, we don't have the applicant handy, but if there are anybody in the audience here who would like to make a comment concerning this particular uh, request, we are open for public input. 
and Kaylee will call you out at a time. Call you up. Um, Excuse me. Yes, I will. Call Some days up. Thursdays aren't good. <laughs> yes. So I have nine comment cards for speakers that requested to speak here in person. And then if we have any additional uh, public comment on Zoom, we'll take them after. So I'm just going to read these in the order I got them. When you come up to the mic, please state your name and address for the record. Okay, so Wade Crandall. I'm sorry, Kaylee. I didn't hear that exchange. My apologies. These are all for the next item. Oh. S the property right across the street. Um, but I did have a couple of folks who's. Yep. Most of them have REZ 21 007. You can speak at any time. You can speak at any time. Sure. Jim Welty, 5801 Honeysuckle Road. Would you state it into the microphone, please? Bring it on down, please, sir. Jim Welty, yeah, and forgive me, 55 years ago, these things worked pretty good. I left my hearing about 10,000 miles from here. So anyway, this is right now in our backyard, ours of Steve's here. We've lived there 22, 23 years. So we've seen the good, bad, and the ugly on Willow Creek Road. It's not, it's pretty ugly now. Um, now the speed is between, I've clocked them down 55 to 70 miles an hour. Probably average is 60. The distance between Penny and Oaks Drive and the intersection of Pioneer Parkway is 750 feet, which if you see, look on the map she had up there, it's not very far. Um, is there any other place around Arizona that you know of that has a roundabout so close to a major growing intersection? Pretty close, isn't it? And some of the facts are, if you're going 68, 60 miles an hour, you're traveling 88 feet a second. And that's 8.52 seconds from Pioneer Parkway to, to Pinion Oaks Drive. Now it's time. In good weather, your braking deceleration is 172 feet. And you're, you see a hazard in front of you, you add 132 feet more. So that comes up to 304 feet of braking. Now you get into rain, that doubles the distances, the braking distances. And if you get into snow or bad visibility, the braking distance goes up tenfold. These are all DOT stats, okay? Excuse me, I think you mean the braking distance goes down, right? Say it again. You said the braking distance goes up with snow. You mean it goes down with snow? No, excuse me, it goes up with snow tenfold. I'm sorry. This DOT. Oh, 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 yes. Okay. Thanks. Bad visibility and snow. Okay. It takes longer to bring, yeah. Consider somebody's coming north, and we see them all the time from Chino. And uh, they want to make the, beat that red light, so they'll run that yellow foot on the accelerator. So time to get it on the other side. Who knows what their speed is going to be? If the roundabout and the project is approved, how would that go in sequence? Will be the roundabout and the development, or the development and then the roundabout, or both at the same time? Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Mr. Chairman, just, just for clarification for everyone here, there has not been a traffic impact analysis, and there's not been a determination that a roundabout would be there. There are other types of configurations that could occur to that intersection to improve safety that wouldn't necessarily change it to something other than the current intersection. So that's why we need the, the traffic impact analysis before any development occurs. Okay. <coughs> Kaylee, next. I realize I need to set a three-minute timer for the speakers. Okay. Okay, so... I'm debating whether I use these speaker request cards because they were filled out from the next item, all of them, or if you folks would like to speak now. You're all about this. Okay, so I'm just going to keep going through them. Um, Chuck Taubman. No, sir, you don't have to speak. If you want to talk about the next item, that's fine. If you want to talk about this one, it's fine. Uh, it, 
please go to the platform. Uh, my name is Chuck Taubman. I live on Dandelion Place, 1113 Dandelion. W most of us are here for both of the zoning requests. The, the problem has to do mostly with the traffic that'll, that is currently going on in that area. Um, the traffic analysis was from 2017. Is that correct, George? The traffic, the traffic count was from 2017. 2017. It's since that time, you've had the, the deep well development go in, and the traffic there has picked up significantly. I mean, it's really, really busy. Um, when I come out on Pinion Oaks Drive to make a left-hand turn, uh, it takes sometimes one to two cycles before I can get out safely. And then to make it even worse, uh, the the way the the road is structured from the south, you don't see the cars coming up until they're right on top of you because of the topology. They, they're coming up a little hill, and then all of a sudden they show up. And um, the city has been doing some great work. I saw a number of motorcycle uh, policemen out there the other day stopping people because, as uh, Jim said, the traffic there, 45, forget it. There's no way. They're doing 50 and 60. And on top of that, when and if that hospital goes in, the traffic from the south is going to pick up significantly. Both of these developments, have the way they're set up, are going to discharge on the Pinion Oaks Drive, which means the traffic is going to uh, increase significantly trying to get out onto Willow Creek Road, because with that development, there's only two entrances and exits. Um, we should be thankful because the north side's only got one, but let's not go there. Um, my concern is traffic. I have lived there since 2015. I have seen a number of accidents at that intersection already, and the traffic is increasing tremendously. And the, the mini storage probably won't put a lot of people on the road, but the other developments will. Both this commercial building, depending on what they use it for. Time is up. And how much longer have I got? That's time. Okay. And the one to the north is going to be worse. Thank you, sir. Can I ask a question? Stan? Sir, I, I'm sorry. I, I do have a question, and maybe I can ask you to address it or anybody else to address it. Have you found, it, when you come up, if you could talk about, have you found that you've changed your individual traffic pattern, meaning you're not going to, you don't exit on Willow Creek Road? Do you find yourself more going on Pioneer Parkway? I just like to know that little bit of information. Can I say something, please? Yes, sir, please. Yeah, a lot of times I won't I won't take the, the chance of trying to make a left on Willow Creek. It's down to Symphony, just farther, but it's safer. And even my neighbor across the street got in a T-bone out there not too long ago. So it, it like the gentleman says there, it, it is really tremendously picked up. And to have so, a roundabout in that short a distance, boy, coming down from the north down to the south, man, thank you. And, and so Symphony is the road you would exit on and that yeah, on to that Pioneer Parkway. Excellent. You know, drive to Symphony, right turn on to Pioneer Parkway, then right turn back on Willow Creek Road. Great. Okay. Thank you. Would, uh, sir, could you please come up to the podium? And I agree with Jim. I am starting to do the same thing and change my um, patterns. But the, the problem is, as we divert our pattern and we start going through the community, we're increasing 
the the traffic within the community tremendously. Oh, Pinion Oaks Drive. I mean, coming down Pinion Oaks Drive, it's becoming almost a thoroughfare. Thank you. Okay, we'll continue with the comment cards. Steve Antle. Steve Antle, 51, or 57, 51 on uh, Pennion Oaks Drive. I live on uh, Honeysuckle Road right next to Tim. And basically, you know, the traffic, I'm just going to say ditto to what's been said. The traffic is terrible. It's probably 30,000 some odd cars now, if not more. And you had mentioned there are alternatives to a roundabout. I would like to hear what those are. And I don't see how anybody here can vote for changing the zoning until they do the traffic study. We have no idea to change the zoning just because their investors want it and want to recoup a couple million dollars on these properties. That's fine. I'm an accountant. But we need to know what we're doing before we do it. And right now we don't know anything because they haven't even presented the traffic study or showed up here today. So, I mean... I don't see any sense of changing the zoning until we have all the information. The most critical that's being said by everybody is traffic. And we're not even talking about the hospital that's going to go in at some point in time, although I'm not sure it's going to reflect us from the, you know, the traffic coming up from Prescott. It's going to affect our area, but certainly anything that's coming over from Chino Valley or Prescott uh, Valley, you know, it's... The left-hand turns there off of 89A is tremendous every morning, and it's getting worse because of the building that's going on, and it's just going to continue. So I think the main problem here is how can we or how can you make any decision without a traffic study? It's impossible because it's terrible right now, and until we know the effects of what's going to happen and what their plans are, we don't know. And also, I don't know, do they really need a two-story uh, a storage area or not? I prefer to having a one and rather than ruining the views that the people bought view lots for at one time and changing 30 seconds what's going on because they want to do it in a retail situation. I think just keep everything to a certain level and that would have to be part of the plan if they make the change. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Before we continue, uh, Tammy, you want to discuss how the sequence with the traffic survey fits into this whole thing here? So if, if those rezonings are approved, then they'll go forward with their traffic impact analysis. They'll have to have that done prior to um, any building permits or engineering permits being issued. So we know that if there's going to be additional improvements required off-site. So as they're bringing the utilities in, they'll have to do any other required um, off-site improvements at that time before so they start developing the properties. From a chicken and egg discussion... Are you saying you can't, you won't, can't or won't do the traffic study un, until we've made a decision on zoning, or can they do the traffic uh, study as a condition of zoning? Well, once the zoning is approved, it's approved. So we can't add any additional conditions except in substantial conformance. That's just something that will happen automatically is that they won't be able to do um, any improvements on the property. We won't issue any of the building permits until they have the engineering permit. And as part of the engineering permit, they'll have to do the traffic impact analysis. We did ask the traffic, our traffic engineer did ask them to do a traffic impact analysis to kind of see what preliminarily may be required in this area. And we never, we did not get one. But they are required for the permits as it moves forward. So they will not be able to put any structures on the property until the traffic impact analysis is done and approved by our city engineer. They'll have to do those improvements prior to building the uses on the property pending the outcome of the traffic impact analysis. Any questions of Tammy? Thank you. Before we continue with public comment, we will continue on this too. Please be advised that there is a three-minute time limit. We like to have enough time for everybody to be able to speak. 
And if someone has already presented what you want to present, um, we have a fairly good memory of what people are telling us already. And being told again doesn't necessarily increase our memory on that there. So, Kaylee. Okay, Robert Stockbridge. Robert Stockbridge, 5750 Goldenrod Way. And I will tell you that in the last three years, uh, traffic has tripled or better on Willow Creek Road. It's become so bad that two days ago, the police chief uh, increased all of the patrols and everything because of the accidents that are happening and because of the traffic conditions that we have. Um, you mentioned that a light is not sufficient at that corner, and for me, a roundabout is kind of silly because of the distance from 89A to to, to the opening. Uh, the it would it would be, and we know that these people are going to. Whatever the plan may be, they have to have submit once it's done. Um, they're going to do the cheapest thing that they can get away with, not the best thing for the 640 homes that they're going to interrupt by being there. Um, the original plan for RE, whatever it was, residential, uh, was part of the reason why we bought homes there. We didn't buy because we wanted strip malls uh, to back up to our homes. Uh, it's unbelievable the amount of traffic that's coming. They have a double left turn lane off of 89A onto Willow Creek. Willow Creek is only a two lane road. That has to tell you something. There is no way to expand Willow Creek out and make it three or four lanes to relieve any of that process. So that's off the table right away. Um, for the council, it comes down to, do we need to have whoever the applicants are uh, make a lot of money at the cost of the residents who have been here for all those years. It, it's, it's really that simple. They're going to make money, and, and these increased things, seconds. if, I don't know if anyone else has noticed, but um, we, we have pretty bad accidents. I told my wife the other day when I came back, I said, there was an accident at the corner, and you can't tell what make a vehicle was one of the ones that was in the accident. That's how bad it was. So the whole thing comes down to, are we gonna make somebody else rich? If they really wanna be there, I understand the traffic is wonderful. Why not have them on the commercial side? Time is up. It's already available. Thank you, sir. Kaylee? Robbie Graves. Uh, Robbie Graves, I'm at 845 Panicum Drive uh, there in Pinion Oaks. Um, I'm going to do this real quick because it has been talked about. Um, but this is all being done bass backwards. <laughs> I mean, why would, you, why would you not find out traffic problems before you start going into trying to rezone? And why do you go into rezoning when it was, it was being put up for sale as a rural, then they buy the property, and then they try to go in and rezone it. Um, that should all be put up front before it even was sold. Um, uh, yeah, property was bought as a rural, and now they're trying to do a business general. Once they, once you rezone that, now you're going to open up the, the door. I mean, it could be a list of all different kinds of things that's going in there um, that it's going to be having traffic trying to get into there trying to come in on to pinion oaks a residential street i went to the first meeting 
the first meeting, we had a plan, and I'm sorry I didn't I think to bring it. You can't bring traffic in on the Pinion Oaks to get in to get in and out of businesses on both sides. They're wanting from that Dunkin' Donut thing with the strip mall to the other side, having people coming in off of Willow Creek onto Pinion Oaks and then going into those businesses. It's that's crazy. It's not even. And as they said, Deepwell Ranch, um, the Dells has been built there. Walden Farms is built there. That's the traffic is multiplying uh, tremendously, and is and Deep Well is not even done. I mean, I don't even know if they're even halfway through. So, first thing needs to be done is a traffic analysis, and that should be done before anything gets done. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Again, as a reminder, it, we, we're looking for new things that haven't been talked about already. You know, we're aware of the traffic questions and so forth on that. So would appreciate new items for us to have consideration of. Okay. Haley. Uh, I have a I have a question just for clarification. Yeah. Has the applicant actually purchased the the property yet? No, they have not. Both of the properties are still hold held by the same property owners. So this is in a part probably part of their escrow is going through the rezoning, which is pretty common that we see that all the time. Excuse me, I have a question for George. George, how many units is projected for Deepwell Ranch? Do you know off the top? In, th in theory, 10,000. 10,000. How many? In, in practicality, it would be well less than that, but yeah. in theory, 10,000. What portion is built right now? Do you know? Give, give or take? 300. 300? In, in Deepwell itself. Yeah. Okay. Thank it's you. A, very it's much, a very sir. small percentage so far. Thank you. Okay, Constance Ricks. I won't repeat what has been said. Oh, oh, we need oh name sorry. And Constance first. Ricks, nine eight five Pinion Oak Drive. Thank you. I won't repeat what has been said, but please don't open door A because of door B needing to be done. So please don't rezone. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, Luann Van Gundy. Sorry, he's got a lot to say. <laughs> Good morning. I'm Luann Van Gundy, 5981 Honeysuckle. I'm the one who's going to be affected by Dunkin' Donuts because they're right in our backyard. I've invited them to come stand in our backyard. He asked me to come into Prescott Valley, see what he's got over there. We did. He never came to my house. So I don't need a fast food restaurant with a squawk box ordering donuts at 6 o'clock in the morning with their coffee. It's really bad. And he goes, oh, we're going to put a buffer. I go, really? Really? 6 o'clock in the morning. Lights coming into our bedroom window. My dog's having coronaries because somebody's back there. It's, it's not good. And then, like everybody else said, the traffic is hideous. I sit there and listen to horrible accidents out on Pinion Oak and, and Willow Creek. It's bad. So that's all I've got. It's just take it for what it's worth, guys. Come in my backyard. You're all welcome. And see if you want that. Thank you, ma'am. Jerry Rook. Good morning. Jerry Rook, 1030 Panicum Drive in Pinion Oaks. Uh, in addition to everything that's been said, which I agree with, uh, just some examples. Um, on um, Willow Creek, that area that was marked uh, business regional a, a landscaping company came in there it backs up to Pinion Oaks um, on Goldenrod and the very first thing that that landscaping company did was put porta pots up against the block wall fence of the pin uh, of the Pinion Oaks home 
So we've got that kind of thing. I also looked at um, some other possible businesses that if, if it is rezoned into business general, uh, there's 40, 40 of them that I found that are permitted uh, uses, including automobile, major and minor repair, automobile sales, uh, motorcycle rentals, farm equipment and supplies, manufactured home sales, vehicle sales, funeral establishments, mini warehouses, uh, restaurants, lounges, bars. These, these are not what we want in our premier housing development. And when we moved here in 2013, um, of course, Pinion Oaks was pretty much developed by then, but we saw the perimeter and we looked it up online and we saw and were very content with, it's not gonna be uh, commercial. It was, it was rated rural um, estate, two acres, so we felt very comfortable with that. And when, when the city says things like, our intention has been all along to make it commercial, that's kind of bothersome. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. No more comment cards. We just have one for the next item. We, we do have one speaker on Zoom. We do have one speaker on Zoom. Um, well... William Ray, you can unmute yourself. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you for uh, calling on me. My name is William Ray. Address is 5660 4 o'clock lane in Pinion Oaks. And uh, I won't repeat the issues of the traffic, but I wanted to mention that um, if this is going to be a Dunkin' Donuts commercial uh, operation. Uh, I think the business hours are important to note. Uh, I saw that the Dunkin' Donuts in uh, PV is open at 4.30 in the morning on weekdays and 5 a.m. on Sundays. And uh, I just don't think that that kind of commercial traffic should be brought in on uh, Pinion Oaks Drive. You know, uh, if they could figure out some other entrance and exit to that business, uh, that might satisfy the residents a little bit. But the next door neighbors are going to be affected by that early morning traffic as these people in the uh, deep well ranch that hasn't even uh, the uh, the volume of that traffic hasn't even been realized yet as they're not even done building these houses uh, as people come in and stop for coffee on their way to way into town as early as 4 30 in the morning on weekdays i think that's going to negatively affect the residents here and so I'd ask the council to not rezone this property. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any other comments? No. Well, yeah, we have um, Allison. You can unmute yourself. Allison? You can unmute yourself. There you go. Yes, I was trying to do that. Thank you. My name is Allison Saba, and I, lived on, I live on 58... 25 Goldenrod Way. I've been there to, for 21 years. And of course, I have all the same concerns. I did. My question also was, what are the hours of the storage unit? Is it a 24 hour facility that they can come and go? And that was not part of the request. We're just looking at the site plan at this time. Okay. So my concern also with the Dunkin Donuts is the hours of operation. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Anybody else, Tammy? Anyone else on Zoom would like to speak? Please raise your hand. Oh, here we have uh, Donna McCrossan. You can unmute yourself. Hi, thank you for taking uh, taking my, um, let me speak. Um, uh, okay, we've addressed the traffic thing. Uh, please but as identify gentleman yourself and address. I'm sorry. Your, ad your, your name address. And address. Sorry. 1037 Panicum Drive in Pinion Oaks. Thank you. 
Um, okay, we've talked about the traffic, but the gentleman just said in um, Deepwell Ranch, we've got like 300 homes already, and he's saying it can handle 10,000. Are you kidding me? I mean, there'll be a freeway out here next to say nothing about the additional building they're going to do off of um, on the other side of, of Pinion Oaks on, on Pioneer Parkway. And so I have my concerns are all the same thing. We're going to find ourselves right in the middle of a lot of industrial or commercial buildings. So that's my concern on top of everything else everybody else has stated. So, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Would anyone else like to speak off from Zoom? No, their hands are being raised. Okay, thank you. I appreciate your comments that you made here. And this is what the commission likes to have come forth so we understand what the public's thoughts are. Um, to be honest, I am disappointed that the applicant isn't here to answer questions. And I don't feel comfortable even voting on something when the applicant doesn't show up on that. So I don't know about other commission members. Mr. Chair, that. may I? Ted? Uh, I also would like to commend the residents of uh, Pinion Oaks. We've had a few previous meetings where the resident groups have attempted to steamroll the the uh, planning commissioners, but you've been very civil, so I want to thank you for that. A um, couple things I wanted to share with you, and then, what, if I may, I'd like to make a motion. Um, <clears throat> this area probably should be rezoned. There's, there's no one's going to build a two-acre property on Willow Creek. Um, uh, I also think it's important that we not attempt to impugn the uh, intent or the character of the developer. Now, the developer's not here, we can't question him, but, <clears throat> but our job as commissioners is to evaluate what's in front of us and not guess ulterior motives. Um, we have three options. We can either vote to approve, we could vote to reject it. Uh, and, and as, as a point of order <clears throat> we we're right now we're looking at our rez 21008 correct correct only <clears throat> only but the but the comments have applied to to both of these so uh do we need to vote on these individually or we have to vote on them individually okay therefore um, Before you make a motion, I'd like to allow the commissioners to make sure. a Sure. Well, then why don't we open up for it? Yeah, okay. I'll come back. Any other commissioners like to make a comment before we make a motion? Yeah, Tom Hutchison. Just a minute, sir. Do you want to make a comment? I want to make sure we're not doing this just on both, because I'm here to represent the second. No, this is only, we take one item at a time. Right. No, these are both public hearings. They're going to go through the same process that we just went through. I understand. Thank you. Tom. Thank you, Don. Um, I di di digested this package uh, over the last couple of days, and, and I walked in here this morning um, deeply concerned about um, traffic. And where I came out was, after listening to the folks here, is that there's too much traffic, number one, and it's moving way too fast, number two. Did I get that right? Yeah. Um, so to me, that equals a, a safety concern. And we'd be remiss, I think, if, if, if we entertain the idea of approving this without knowing what that really means. Uh, so that a, a traffic analysis, in my mind, is absolutely critical. But I also agree that this property will get rezoned and it will be used um, sooner or later. But for us to move forward without having, again, meat on the bones would be a mistake. 
Okay. Any other commissioners want to make? Dan? I do, Don. Yeah. Um, so I agree based off of the general plan and knowing that you know, that's going to be, we've looked at this being a commercial area. There, there are some, some items that, that we do need more information on. One is obviously the traffic analysis or impact analysis. Um, the reason that I asked the, the residents to talk about have they changed up their traffic pattern based off of, um, based off of the traffic is because, you know, if I, I exited that area as I researched the, the location and I had to make a left-hand turn and it was, I mean, it was very dangerous very understand and, and there is also a median there's a concrete median right there so there's not a lot of room um the when we do the traffic impact analysis i would just encourage the staff or whoever uh whenever we do the planning to put potentially make this this is a residential neighborhood now looking at a even closing off that exit and only allowing emergency vehicles only right as an emergency egress or ingress um for various reasons um that and then i would ask any applicants that does move forward to then develop a plan that does not include an exit or entrance from the pinion oaks area um but on the actual road uh main thoroughfares um so and the other piece too is um I wrote down just if there are some items that are, if we look at a commercial area, that's not necessarily business general, but other options zoning within the commercial realm. I mean, those are just some area, you know, some options that we really need to look at and advocates in the future really need to look at. So again, I see that this goes commercial, but let's make sure that it's a commercial entity that really helps out that neighborhood but also provides really what residents need in the area. We see that there is zero commercial that's even popped up around there and the times have been changing and we know it's going to happen. So those are my comments. Okay. Uh, Tammy clarification thing. Does the city do the traffic analysis or is the applicant responsible for doing the traffic analysis? The applicants are responsible and then we we give the city as input so it'll be handed over to because a dot will be part of this too um, and the county too because pioneer parkway is um, overseen by the county so we have three the a dot the city and the county all giving input into this traffic impact analysis so an option for you you could also defer the application until a tia is done okay any other comments Ted, do you want to go ahead and make a motion then? I would like to make a motion. Uh, as I mentioned to... As I mentioned to the public earlier, we have three options. We can approve it, we can turn it down, or we can table it. And I'm going to move that on REZ21-008 uh, that we table the motion for the... A following additional, and I have to be specific about what information is needed. Um, we'd like to see a traffic study. I think we owe it to the residents of Pinion Oaks. Uh, I'd also like to see uses. The one resident identified a number of uses. You missed the fact that you can also put a circus out there temporarily. Um, and the developer's not here. So I think it's only fair that we uh, table the motion for those three reasons, and I would be open to any other commissioners that have any other conditions for tabling the motion. Stan? Yeah, um, yeah, I fully agree with the motion. Uh, one item I'd like to ask is um, just for us to publicly list the commercial zoning options that are available as well. How would you like us to list that? Uh, um, the, so all of the all of the permitted uses in all of our zoning categories are available in the city's land development code, and those are that's available online. I also gave you copies of the uh, the list itself. We can make those available to anyone who requests them if that's one way to do it. I like to clarify something. Usually, when we receive a site plan in for a rezoning the site plan states what's going to be on there i.e a mini storage an office building 
and we can approve or disapprove based upon the site plan. So if the site plan is approved with an office building and a mini storage, then that's what has to be there unless they come back to us. If a site plan is approved with a one occupant on there and nothing on the rest, that leaves the rest of it wide open for whatever is under business general. Am I correct in that? That's correct, and we will discuss that with the second item. Right. So the two are somewhat different. On the Yes, they're asking for the same rezoning, but the site plans are different submissions for each one. Yeah, and I see that's that's a very, very valid point. And as long as the site plan, we're approving also that comprehensive site plan uh, when we're doing the approval. I just, my point was not just rezoning at business general without any type of site plan, but if that's what we, our intent is, then, then I think that we're good with the motion as it stands. Did you want to second the motion then? or I would actually. I would like to second. Okay. We have a motion and seconded. Any further discussion on this item? Tom? Yeah. Ted, would you repeat the motion? I move the table REZ21-008, uh, requesting the following information. One, that we uh, have completed a traffic study. Two, that we understand the use of the property. And three, uh, that the developer be here to answer any questions. So there's three conditions. Okay. Kaylee, would you call the roll, please? Stan Goligoski? Yes. Thomas Hutchison? Yes. Butch Tracy? Yes. George Lee? Yes. Ted Gamboji? Yeah. Don Michaelman? Yes. The motion to table passes 6-0. Now, just for your information, that means we're going to be transferring this down the road to another meeting. It will be publicized on when that meeting will be, so you need to check the city website. These are, this is additional information we're looking for on this. You are invited to come back to that meeting if you'd like to come back to it. If you feel that you presented your thoughts concerning this, we will remember this. I hope we will remember this. And so if you have any questions on it, let me know. But this is how the proceeding will work on this. Any other questions on that particular part? It's probably down, down the road question, but we didn't even know what the grade is going to be there. You know, one part of, uh, of Willow Creek Road there, it's 10 foot high, and then it goes down to the corner of Pinion Oaks Drive and Willow Creek Road to nothing. But we don't even know what the grade's going to be. This is the reason we want to have the applicant here to answer questions yeah, right. like that. Thank you. That's something we can't answer ourselves. Okay, sir. Your Honor? Well, it's not Your Honor. <laughs> but I'll give you the quarter later, okay? <laughs> Do you want to make a comment? We've already voted on this, yeah. and it's going to be deferred. It doesn't mean no. It just means that we want more information before we can make a decision. And Mr. Chairman, okay. because, because you had a specific request for the traffic impact analysis to be completed and back with results to you, there's no reason to have a date certain, but that also leaves the date uncertain. When or if the traffic impact analysis is completed, we will reschedule this and re-notice the neighborhood like we did this time. What um, basically, unless there's a traffic analysis done, it's not going to be scheduled again. That, is that right? basically the way your motion set the table. Right. Question for George, sir. Um, is this time bounded? How much time does the developer get to do this? Is that up to us? And should we time bound it? It could be up to you. I can tell you traffic impact analyses can take weeks, months, or years, depending on how busy traffic engineers are, because that's who will do the study, a private traffic engineer. Um, everything is developing right now. There's a lot of development going on. Engineers are busy. It could be months away before we're back in touch with you about this. That's troubling to me. I, it seems like we need to put the developer's feet to the fire here. Well, Tom, it's up to him to do this. If he doesn't do it, that's his choice. For us to put a time frame on it, we have, uh, they, when an applicant applies, they have to pay a fee to apply. 
how long a time frame? Is there any time frame of that or not? Not specifically. If something is still in motion with a project, we generally leave the project alive. If it's pretty obvious the project is dead, then we will close the project out and you'll, you won't see it again. It will require a new application, a new applicant to bring it back into the public realm. Okay. And this is, this is going to force the applicant to make a determination as to whether he wants to voluntarily go forward. Now, the time limits in the code are uh, applicable to the city council. That if the council doesn't act within 60 days of a rezoning hearing, then it's deemed a denial. But there's no similar uh, timeline in the Land Development Code for the Planning and Zoning Commission. Okay. And, and I would caution putting an arbitrary time frame on it could prevent a traffic impact analysis that could, in the long run, actually benefit the neighborhood because that traffic impact analysis should look for any ways to mitigate the current problems that they're having with access onto and off of Willow Creek Road. Maybe. Butch? Excuse me, George. It's Butch Tracy. Is there a, is there a, a cost for this analysis? Absolutely. Uh -huh. Any idea what? No idea. Okay. I, I don't. I've never ordered one myself. Okay. Is there any scenario where the... the the city of Prescott uh, would initiate that and and have it. I mean, this looks like a, a corridor problem. It looks like a lot more than just you know just what we're talking about here. We we do regular. We just did one south of Prescott. In Utah. Sorry, you have to tell us your name and your address. Ricky uh, one four six two four South One Seventy Ninth Avenue, uh, Goodyear, Arizona. Mm -hmm. Applicant for the next one, but we just did a traffic study south of here uh, for the other Duncan which uh, you guys approved and it's being con constructed. It was about $20,000, takes about a month and a half. Thank you. Thank you. It's actually less than I thought it would be. Yeah. All right, we're gonna be moving on to the next item here. And the next item is REZ21-007, Property Owner, Granite Property Investments, LLC, Applicant, Bar Napkin Productions, a request for rezoning from RE two acre, rural estate two acre, to BG Business General to allow for a new drive through restaurant on APN 106-02-052D at 5930 Willow Creek Road. George. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is a very similar request. It's a request for a rezoning from the RE2 acre to business general. It is to allow a commercial development of a portion of the property. Um, location, um, we're all very well aware of it. It's the north side of the access road into Pinion Oaks. It is a relatively level site compared to the south side. The south side has an elevation change as you head further south. This is relatively flat. Um, it does currently have um, a small building that's associated with, I believe, a retail, uh, probably a, a realtor site for Pinion Oaks at one time at the very south edge of the property. Um, that property is part of this. It's the same ownership and would be incorporated into develop any development of the, the overall site. Just to show you the regional zoning, business regional across the street, uh, to the north is uh, Deepwell Ranch, that sort of orange or gold color, is uh, a special plan communities zoning, which allows for, as you know, a complicated list of permitted uses. South, again, primarily commercial zoning. Along this strip of the roadway, the RE2 acre is, uh, remains in place. The site plan that was provided with this application indicates only the northern third of the property in development. It is for a fast food restaurant type operation. Um, this is the type of operation that generally locates along high volume roadways. Um, it doesn't, they're not really a destination location typically. They, they borrow the traffic off the road that's already there rather than create traffic themselves. But in this case, the original site plan indicated a potential for a right in off of eastbound traffic on Pioneer Parkway. Uh, we don't believe the county will approve that, but that's something the county will have to resolve. Um, they're also showing a right-in, right-out operation 
that potentially could be changed to a, a, a right in and full access operation that would that would be at the approximately the roughly the center point between uh, Pioneer Parkway and Pinion Oaks Drive. Uh, that driveway access is aligned just north for those folks who know the area well, just north of the raised median. So there's a point where the raised median ends, and this driveway would be just north of that. Um, that would be something that obviously we're interested in a traffic impact analysis for this site as we were for the other for the same reasons. Um, any type of driveway access in close proximity to Pioneer Parkway with the volume of traffic that goes through that intersection in all different directions is something that triggers uh, warning signals for our traffic engineering department. They want to know what the impacts are going to be of this development and the potential development on the remainder of the site, as well as any possible mitigation to dangers that these, these new uh, developments could create or to reduce traffic impacts on adjacent properties. So that's something that we've looked at. The actual site layout for the development is very standard. Um, it, it's a building in the middle. It has drive-through lanes around it. It has more than sufficient parking based on the square footage of the building shown on site. Uh, the bigger issues are going to be uh, potential uses uh, of the remainder of the site. You can see the, um, let's see if I can get the mouse to show up here. Um, this was the potential or is the potential for a right in off of Pioneer Parkway. Again, that will be subject to the county as they retain jurisdiction over Pioneer Parkway, not the city of Prescott. And then this intersection would be the one that could either be right in, right out, or potentially have full access um, at, at Willow Creek Road. Um, the volume of traffic in this Particular, particular section of Willow Creek Road is very high. There's no doubt about the concerns there, and our traffic engineering department has requested the traffic impact analysis for this design specifically, but to also look for additional uh, potential. One of the additional potential options would be not to put traffic slowing or entering here closer to the intersection, but to put it down here. And that would take traffic off of Willow Creek Road onto a short segment of uh, Pinion Oaks Drive to get into this site. The responsibility for handling mitigation for such a change in traffic design falls on the developer. So what that might mean is that not just pulling traffic off, but creating a right turn lane and perhaps another right turn lane into the property so that traffic going into Pinion Oaks is not blocked by people trying to get into this property. That's something that is, I, just because I've done this for a long time, I know is a possibility. We need traffic engineering. We need the traffic engineer for the city to review the traffic engineering provided by the private engineers in order to make any of those determinations. So everything I've just told you is speculative, but it's all possible. There are concerns on the planning staff side about the remainder of the site not having any type of uh, development shown on it as we saw on the other. Typically with a rezoning, if we don't know what's going to go in there, the city has been reluctant um, at least in the 21 years I've been here, have been very reluctant to rezone property just to increase the value of the property without knowing what's going in and what impacts it could cause on adjacent properties. So you'll note I called that out in the staff report as a concern. Usually we see a more comprehensive, at least conceptual site plan that shows what uses could or should go in there. Rezonings generally have a conceptual uh, conformance with conceptual site plan condition in them. Um, that's a typical thing that comes out of this body, and it's a typical thing the city council uh, will place on rezonings as well. That gives some assurance to adjacent property owners of what types of uses, maybe not individually. It may be a dentist or it may be a different type of medical use. It could be any, any number of the uses that are listed in our table for a commercial that could go into a location. But generally, if you know what the site design looks like, you're limiting those uses. You're not going to show an office building and then put an, uh, an auto dealership. That's not in substantial conformance. So again, our concerns with this one are primarily with the, the vacant area and the access, again, traffic impact analysis. 
synopsis of what I just said, the unknown two thirds of the property is a concern. We generally don't rezone without knowing what's going to go on the property, at least in a conceptual manner. Um, that's something that's been well established with the city. And the need for traffic engineering, absolutely. We know the volume of traffic there. I will point out that the volume of traffic at that intersection is a driver for business types like this to locate there. You put a fast food restaurant on a high volume road, they don't go anywhere else. So that's not unexpected. Something will happen with the site as you noted at some point in the future. We just want to make sure through our processes, both at city staff level and at planning commission level, that the safety of the existing development is taken into account. The, the safety of future users of the commercial sites are taken into account. And to do that, traffic engineering is absolutely necessary. We left you several possible motions um, up here. I think you have basically uh, established the same possible motions for the previous one, so you have options there. We do have the applicant here who may be able to fill you in on some additional information that we don't have at this point, and certainly I'm happy to take any questions you have for staff. Thank you, George. Questions for staff? Yeah, I've got a question for George. Um, George, are there acceptance standards, uh, acceptance criteria for a traffic study? Do we, yes, there are. We, a traffic engineer doing a traffic study has to coordinate with the city's traffic engineer to make sure that they agree on the parameters of the study. How far out do they look and for what do they look? Do they look at interchanges? Do they look at everything in the immediate area? And that's something that's established before the study is done. So, so our traffic engineers would establish that scope? Correct. And we, then, we negotiate a scope with them, and it's an agreement on the city side before they proceed with the study. Any other questions for staff? Would the applicant like to address the commission? Jason Rickey, Barnapton Productions, uh, business address 2828 North Central Avenue. Suite 1300, Phoenix. Uh, do you need my personal address, too? I gave that earlier. No, the business okay. address is fine. Yeah. Um, thank you both. You guys did a great job of presenting this, not just on this one, but the previous one, and all the background. I didn't know all that background either on the, uh, the general plan stuff from 2000, 2015. So all good to know. I've heard their comments as well. I'm in a similar situation at my own personal house. I have a view fence behind me. The land, the uh, people when I bought the house said it's going to be residential. Lo and behold, they built a community center behind me. I have no recourse because, again, they told me nobody could build behind me because it's a wash. The wash is only a certain amount of my space behind my building. Then there's other properties. There's other stuff, you know, down the street. They've got lights blinding my house and stuff. So, I feel you. I have the same problem. Um, Anyway, um, we designed a Dunkin' Donuts south of here as well, down Prescott, or on Willow Creek, actually. It's about, I don't know, a few miles south of here. Um, traffic's a problem. We had to do a traffic study. The problem here is this is a much larger site. We know we want to do a Dunkin'. The developer, my client, um, is available on Zoom, and if you need to talk to him, he's available as well. But um, cart before the horse kind of a deal. It's kind of what some of the... Uh, residents were saying as well a traffic study will have to be based on what's going to go in here if you put in a school the traffic study will have to address the school if we put in retail office which is what our plan is our traffic study will have to address the the retail and the office component not a school without getting it zoned we have no we don't know what to base it on it's it's an all it's all this hypotheticals like was stated before anything can go there we can't even get our, our developers having trouble getting people to be interested to spend their money to do LOIs because they don't know if they can even do a project here. It's been planned to be commercial, which has been stated in the general plan. It's just at this point we need to go through the process with the city planning staff and everybody to get everyone on the same page and be happy with what we're going to develop here. But we need to get that zoning as the first step in order to make those next steps and, and really develop the whole site plan. Um, 
Uh, let's see. And then I wanted to clarify what you said, Stan, earlier about off of Pinion Oak, something about uh, emergency access only. What was that about? Can you explain that? Yeah, it'd be basically shutting down any access for anybody but emergency vehicles on Willow Creek Road. And so then you'd basically, then the exit would be on Symphony primarily or any other exit along Pioneer Parkway. Is that for the residentials or for the commercial park going in? I mean, that's anybody. I mean, it would be a shut Nobody down really road. Use Pinion Oaks Drive. That's correct. You could only access it through Symphony or other routes coming off of Pioneer Parkway. Okay. And then just to clarify as well, so we did, we did show the entrance off of the Willow Creek there. Um, and I, I thought it was in one of the preliminary comments, and I, I might be wrong here, but I thought they were talking and or telling us we had to continue the median to prevent it from being a full access. It would only be a right in, right out, and we would have to create a right turn lane, a uh, decel lane, essentially, for that access point. So it wasn't just going to be coming right off of the main drive lanes. It was going to have to have a new lane created in order to create that uh, access point. Yeah, your plan does have an egress and uh, ingress off of Willow Creek, but the other one did not. Um, and then I, I don't know what the, I'd have to look back at the codes and say how far apart entrances can be. I, I would assume if we're going to not allow anybody to come in off of Pinion Oaks, I don't know what happens to the storage unit. They don't have any way to get to their site. Uh, again, they're not, that's not our problem. It's, it's a different development, but um we would obviously like to have more than one entrance. It just helps with the flow of traffic in the actual site. But again, we don't know what to, it's hard to develop a site plan when we don't know who we can put into the site. So that's really, like I said, it's a difficulty. Um, cart before the horse thing, I'm, and we, we, we know we have to do a traffic study, but they are not cheap and they take time. And to ask the developer to, who is already spending money on us and you know, time and they've got their escrow in there and stuff. So to ask somebody to, to do a traffic study when they don't know what they're going to develop is, is hard. Um, again, we know if we get the zoning, we will have to do the traffic study. We'll have to meet all the zoning requirements, all the LDC requirements. We will do everything we can to make this as good as possible. Because again, the, our developer wants it to be a nice place for people to come. They don't want to make it turn anybody away. So um i don't know i don't know like i said we develop do we develop a lot of these things we always go through the same kind of process with the cities and we try to to be a well or a working partner with you guys uh you give us comments and we make adjustments to our site plan in order to satisfy you satisfy the the neighbors anybody that has input we try to appease them but at some point we have to we all have to you know collaborate to make this thing work so sir just to let you know i've been fortunate enough to be on the planning commission two different times for quite a few years and we have never approved a rezoning without knowing what's planned to be in there and without a plan to be in there it'd be difficult for at least me to support any change in zoning okay. that's just the one item there understood i mean on the devil's advocate side somebody told this was going to be who zoned it to be re in the first place, RE2 acre. Somebody just said, make it that. Nobody had a plan for it, but it was just rezoned. Our, in most of the places we go to, there are different steps. We have the zoning, conditional uses, then site plan approvals, all those things. So it, it takes, we have to go through each one of those one at a time. And this one, it seems like it's all at the same time. Like there is no zoning and then planning for site plan design, all that. Well, I'm not sure where else you had been and working on this, but in Prescott and the part and the time I've been on the commission here, it has not occurred for a rezoning on, well, here's business general, do what you want to do. If you want business general, this is what I want to do. And the site, it's approved based upon the site plan. If there a change down the road, then it comes back in. And we, so. we understand that too as well, that if we were to make any changes here, we'd have to come back. If, if but you, you have no plan again. for that vacant space. Well, it, again, it's most we, we're having trouble getting people interested to come. It's most likely, and I think we at one point had presented some other options there of continuous building of just commercial, 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 commercial. 
offices. I mean, there's options there, but it's like you said, it's theoretical, it's hypothetical. It's, it's, there's all uh -huh. kinds of options. We just don't know what we can do until we have a zoning that says we can do it. Any questions of the applicant by commission members? Yeah, I have a question. Butch. It's Butch Tracy. Do you, uh, is there another Dunkin' Donuts in the area, Prescott Valley, somewhere? Around? One in Prescott Valley, and there's one, like I said, they're building it right now south. The one you're building, yes, I realize that. Where's the one in Prescott Valley? Uh, Glassford Hill. Oh, there you go. Yes. Cool. Thank you very much. Yeah, I just, something to look at. I, I just uh, was curious. Yeah, this would only be, this is a, a combo as well, so it'd be the ice cream component with the coffee. It'd be what, I'm sorry? A, com a combo store, so it has a Dunkin' and Baskin Robbins, just like the one in Prescott Valley. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for the applicant? Thank you, sir, unless you have some additional information no, I, you want to present. The, uh, or, like I said, my client is on Zoom. He said he would be willing to oh. speak as well. Is, is Neil, is Neil the... Uh-huh. Okay. And we do have uh, one speaker card for this item. Okay. We, we do have the applicant. Neil, you, uh, you're welcome yes. to speak. Yes, this is Neil Borden. My address is 9 Somerset Lane, Edgewater, New Jersey. And I listened to everybody speak today. And the point is that we, we're coming in solely at this point in time to get a rezoning for Duncan. And when we go and do a Duncan, there is, we are totally flexible in our design. We try to be part of the neighborhood. We put in a patio and we want our Duncan to look like the homes that are behind us. If that's what everybody wants, we're not looking to do anything that's going to upset the, the community because a lot of those same people will want to come to our Duncan. You know, we're obviously a primarily a coffee establishment. And, and so we don't use any up lighting. We only, we, we don't use, we only use LED lights and it's down lighting. And whatever we're asked to by the planning board, a planning commission, whether it's buffering and whatever, to whatever extent, to whatever it's net, whatever is necessary to make the people feel comfortable with us is what we're willing to do. We're not looking to be adversaries. We're not looking to be difficult. We just don't understand, like for example, a traffic report. We're willing to do a traffic report, but what is the traffic report going to do for us in this case? We want the traffic report to be part of planning so the people from the city who deal with the traffic tell us what's appropriate. Not people who are not experts. I'm not an expert. The people from Pinion Oaks are not experts. I, I, I know a lot more than many of those people because I've been involved in development in hundreds and hundreds of projects, but I don't know. And I want to do what's necessary to keep the place safe because that's the only way we do well. And on top of that, if the rest of the property was ever utilized, we would come back and say, what do you think? It would probably be office maybe a dental office, maybe Aspen Dental, which is a national chain. It may be an urgent care center. We're not looking to build a nightclub that's open all day and all night. I mean, that's far-fetched. That's not what we're going to do here because we destroy our own business, which is Duncan. So I'm wearing two hats. I'm a developer, but I'm also the Duncan franchisee. And so I want to make everything right for the community. It's not just people coming off the road in traffic. That's only one aspect. I want everybody to enjoy the Duncan. And that's what happens in most areas. We're about to build one across from the hospital. And you, what do you think it's going to be? It's going to be people utilizing the hospital, people who are from the general area. It's not going to be people who are just on the road, random people. That's not what we're looking to do. We want to be good neighbors. And we want to do the right thing and, 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 and to lump us. And it, it would be great to talk about the other project where they want to put mini storage. And I have no issue with that. I have no issue what they put in as an application. If they didn't come today, I don't know why. I wish they did. And we can all speak at the same time. 
But again, I want everybody to be comfortable with us. We want to be like we're doing another one in Prescott. We did one in Prescott Valley. Everybody's happy. We're going to design it again according to the neighborhood, not according to anything where we use the same uh, uh, we use the same style in every location. Thank you, sir. So. That's that's the way I, I don't really. So I'm trying to get a grasp of what everybody's saying and looking for. We want to be we want to be again good neighbors and get this 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 project moving forward, where the people on the planning commission can give us a lot of input. Thank you, sir. Any question for the applicant? Yes, I have a question. Tom, uh, Tom Hutchison here. Uh, I'm wondering if you've got a viable business plan if only a Dunkin' Donuts went into that property, i.e., your approval is just for Dunkin' Donuts and the rest of that property stays vacant forever. We are just fine, sir. We th we, we're right now in Phoenix in many locations. Mm -hmm. We have in total, uh, as, a fr as franchisees, we have over 100 of them, both on the east coast and as well as Arizona. In Arizona, we, we have in, in, in the 30s. Uh, and and, and, and we, we can survive whether we develop the balance of the property or we utilize it just for the Duncan. Thank you very much. Any other questions for the applicant? Thank you, sir. We appreciate your information on that. Now we'll open it up for public comments. Kaylee, would you... Yes, I have one comment card for this, and then obviously one gentleman raising his hand. So, Wade Crandall. Good morning. I'm Wade Crandall, CMA Realty, uh, located at 615 East Gurley in Prescott, Arizona. Um, I represent, along with uh, Patrick Sendin, uh, the developer. So, just to give you a little history, um, January 29th, we had a voluntary public meeting with Pinion Oaks residents at a nearby location. We had about 40 or 50 uh, residents come. Uh, Neil Borden, as the developer, was there on site along with Patrick and I. And we had very civil discussions. It was, it was a good meeting. We heard several um, <clears throat> of the comments that we've already heard today, which I'm not going to repeat. Um, but we've been very proactive. Um, Neil's heart, the developer in this has been, let's be proactive, let's go to the neighborhood. We know this is going to be business eventually. That's been said multiple times um, by the council and um, the public understands that. Neil's heart is to, hey, to the public and to the neighbors, what would you like to see here? That was the theme of that meeting over and over and over. And the main comments we heard from the residents was, we do not want a gas station. We do not want a convenience store. We do not want a bar. Th items like that. Neil committed and said, these are, these are things that we do not want either. These are not conducive to our business. We know that we want to do a Dunkin', we know we will do whatever's required by the city to comply with setbacks, with uh, boundaries for the residents. Um, and um, Duncan or any future business that goes in there is not causing the traffic problem. The traffic problem's already there. By approving this development and approving this zoning, this is going to expedite solving the traffic problems or mitigating the traffic problems that we currently have at this location. It's only going to get worse if this property is not developed. It's going to be delayed that much longer. And um, so we've been very proactive. We had a very good uh, meeting. Um, and, you know, we, we understand that change is hard. And but there's got to be a compromise. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anybody else?
Yes, sir. Will you come up to the podium? S state your name. My name is Chuck Taubman. I live on Dandelion Place 1113. Uh, if you look at my sheet, I originally wanted to talk about this and not about the other, but regardless, I am most concerned about putting that Duncan right right there and especially not knowing what's going to go in with the rest of the property. Um, the traffic in that area, as we all talked about, is an issue. And a facility like a Dunkin' Donuts where people are coming in early in the morning and even late in the evening is going to be the ingress and outgress of that area is going to be impossible. Uh, there's no way that people are going to be able to come in and out of that uh, area on Willow Creek with the traffic from the north and everybody t making the left-hand turn. Um, it's, uh, it's just not practical. Uh, it's one thing to have a a set of buildings where you have offices and stuff where there's minimal traffic, but something like a, a fast food facility relies upon people coming constantly, and uh, it's just not going to work. And the other facilities that they mentioned that they're putting in <clears throat> where there are Duncans, that was a... a commercial area like the one in Prescott Valley, it's surrounded by the, the Finley um, Convention Center and all the rest of it all around it. This isn't. This backs up to a quiet neighborhood. And the the woman who lives right behind it is going to hear at 4.30 in the morning, I want a cup of coffee. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, yes, come up to the podium, please. Do I need to speak my name again? Yes, please. Robbie Graves, 845. Bring, bring the mic down, Father. There Robbie you go. Graves, 845 Panicum Drive in Pinion Oaks. Uh, I was at that meeting. I don't quite remember it quite the same way he, he just, just stated it. I think we were one of the first people that came in the two realtors and the developer were standing there and i remember asking you know what is this all about oh well we want to know about how the pinion oaks people feel and then that's where the first time we seen the dunkin donuts thing i said if you were so concerned about what we felt why didn't you come to ask us before you already started the the decision on the on the dunkin donuts so uh, somebody also had brought up about the fact about the hours because of the lady that's living behind with the drive up and they said oh well we can we can work with you on that we'll work on the people well no the you know the franchise usually opens at 4 30 4 35 o'clock in the morning so there was a little wishy-washiness there and then as to the man here that ex uh, explained about the uh, I think you said six to seven hundred feet from Pioneer to Pinion Oaks 750. 750, 750 feet as they were speaking you you think about that speed coming down and all of a sudden they look up and see Duncan oh I think I get a donut and a coffee and then the brake starts coming on right away to be able to get in what is that going to do with all the traffic that's coming I mean we're going to have rear ends braking you know uh accidents it, it's it's just not it's not feasible and again to come in off of Pinion Oaks and then however else you're going to be able to get in there on that 750 feet is just going to be, uh, again, the, the traffic analysis, I, I think, will probably, will probably show, you, show you that. Um, I think that's, I've got notes all over here, but, oh, when, when you don't have an idea of what it is, you got Dunkin' Donuts, maybe it's going to be a Taco Bell, maybe it's going to be a Chick-fil-A. Maybe it's being in and out. Have you ever been by an in and out and seen the backup of an in and out? 
I mean, think about those places. Once you put in one fast food spot, it's going to go, it, it's, it's just going to grow. Uh, chances are it's going to be fast food places that go in there. And, and think about what the mess is going to be like at, that, at the corner of Pioneer and Willow Creek. It's going to be horrible. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Kaylee, anybody else? Yes, one more. Tim Well, <laughs> 250 Yoda 1 Honeysuckle Road. Uh, at the meeting, did you say that north and south there from Duck and Donuts down to Pinion Oaks Road to the property lines to the west that there's been a drive? It emptied onto Pinion Oaks Drive? Uh, say that again, I'm sorry. I thought at the meeting we had, initial meeting we had, behind Dunkin' Donuts, there's, see the dotted line? Yeah. That was going to be a drive down the Pinion Oaks Drive, wasn't it? I no, thought it said it was, no, okay. No. Okay. No, I'm, I'm no. sorry. I, I think that indicates an easement of some kind, that, okay, thank like you. for utilities. Okay. Anyone else would like to? Okay, one more. <laughs> Steve Antall, 5871 Honeysuckle Road. They're right on the corner of uh, Pinion Oaks Drive and Honeysuckle Road. And, you know, I, I don't really mind having a storage in behind us as long as it's not built up high and we get into problems of sight and the elevation there, like we talked about, it probably goes up 15, 10 to 15 feet towards the church that's going south from Pinion Oaks. It just goes like this. In fact, my house where I live on the corner there, they build it up to where I wasn't on sloping. They build it up straight like that. So I'm up higher, almost up as high as your house right now. But really, I, I'm looking at the big picture. And looking at the pictures, that big piece of real estate on the east side of Pinion Oaks. Isn't that not commercial? I was, that's a huge piece of property. Do you know what? how many acres that is by any chance? I don't or just recall both? the acres. Come on. I don't recall the acres. Okay. But it looks like to me you'd put a retail establishment scenario that would look like the uh, fries scenario that they're doing down there. You know, that we go to all the time. And I see that size of a unit going in on the east side of Pinion Oaks if you approve it. So what's going to happen five years from now at that whole damn area on a piece of real estate that's on the west side of Willow Creek Road that is in really a crappy retail location. I don't care what anybody says. The gentleman said it will help improve the traffic. How can creating more obstacles to a freeway helps traffic? I don't understand the comment. And the argument was they were going to have an ingress and egress off of Pinion Oaks. And everybody there, those 40, 50 people, everyone was against having any kind of access off of Pinion Oaks Drive. There are only two, like stated, two ingresses, egress. I don't want to go down to Symphony and take a right and take another right, go through the light, instead of getting out on Pinion Oaks Drive where I'm a block and a half away to go to Fry's. Why do I have to do that? Why do I have to be imperiled to doing something else? Uh, what's going to happen five, six years from now when that hospital gets built and they want to develop that east side property that's for dealing with property that's really a buffer zone to a nice residential area rather than a, a zone for commercial use? It's crazy. And with what's there now in five, three hundred, three or five hundred houses in Deep Well now, and they, they schedule 10,000. With the growth of Prescott, we know that's going to get filled seconds. up to nine, ten thousand. And I think we need to look at the future, not just today. Thank you, sir. Anyone else would like to make a comment? I believe Caroline? that's all. Do we have anyone on Zoom, George? Okay. Okay. Any commission members want to make a comment before we go on to a possible motion? Okay. Mr. Chairman, can I make a comment? Yes, George. <laughs> so we, we, we've given you options for motions, but one thing that came up during the discussion occurred to me that one of the circumstances that we have concerns about is the potential of rezoning a chunk of property without having an idea of what could go on to that property. It wouldn't necessarily address a situation associated with traffic, but if the applicant's rezoning application were constrained to the area they have a site plan for, 
leaving the remainder RE2 acre for now for future rezoning when they find out what they want to do with it would be one option that they have. I'm not saying that would be a, a motion on your side. That's an option that the applicants have. They George, could would you repeat that? They could reduce they could reduce the area that they're proposing for rezoning to the area that they have a known user and site plan for. Again, following our pattern in Prescott, where our determination of which is the cart and which is the horse is that we want to know what you're going to build first. That's the horse. The rezoning is the cart. It's an option for them to think about. I Again, I don't believe you would incorporate that into a motion. Right. Butch? Yeah, George Butch Tracy. Do you, what is the distance from that intersection to their to their proposed uh, drive in there? Do you do you know what that is? I mean, I was I was kind of confused I on that when I was seeing. I believe it's about, do you have a specific number? It's around 300, 300 feet. And how far is it from the, the actual building to the residence, to the nearest resident? That would be approximately 60 feet. Thank you. And is there a, a noise study? You know, they were talking about the, the somebody ordering coffee at 4 o'clock in the morning. You know, I've, I've heard that. Uh, I remember in the 80s uh, on, on Pleasant Street hearing Jack in a Box. And, you know, I'm sure there's other ordinances now maybe hold that down. But, but it, was, uh, it was quite disrupting, you know, at, at midnight or whatever that that was going on. So is there a study that's done that way? We don't have a specific study on noise for that purpose. We do have requirements built into the code to add additional buffering that helps reduce noise. Okay. Walls and thicker landscaping reduce noise. Location of order boxes and things like that are something that we work with the developer on so that those are away from the, the property and facing away from the property so that you don't get the, the tinny voice that comes out of the speaker into your window at 4 o'clock in the morning. Um, it would be likely on the north side of the building, just given the flow of traffic around the building, and likely facing away from the neighborhood because of that flow of traffic. So it is something that's taken in consideration. We do look at it as part of the site plan approval. Thank you, George. Any other questions? Is there a motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion. Tom Hutchison here. I move uh, to recommend denial of rezoning REZ 21-007 um, based on the incompleteness of the of a traffic study, and number two, the blank check idea of not knowing what's going to happen on the rest of that property. Okay, we have a motion. Is there a second to that motion? <clears throat> if there's no second, the motion dies because of no second on that. Is there another motion? Mr. Chairman. I move to table REZ 21-07 pending a traffic study and a um, more, defin de more definitive use um, of, of, of that site plan. Yeah, site plan. Thank you. All right. Is there a second to that motion? I'd second that. All right. We had a motion and a second. On it. Uh, Haley, will you call the roll, please? Stan Goligoski? Yes. Thomas Hutchison? No. Butch Tracy? Yes. George Lee? Yes. Ted Gamboji? Yes. Don Michaelman? Yes. The motion to table passes 5 1. Now, for the applicant, are you, do you understand what we're looking for here? Okay. All righty. Is there any uh, additional information from staff, updates, or anything? Um, yes, uh, Tammy Duet, planner. So we did we did provide to you guys a uh, calendar for next year's meetings. Um, usually the week of Thanksgiving, which is usually when our last our meetings are, we usually cancel those meetings. So for next month. Um, we'll get back to you in the next week or so in regards to if we have any applications. Our next meeting would be on a Wednesday, the day before Veterans Day. 
Um, Because Veterans Day is on a Thursday this year. So that's the second week of the month when we usually have our meetings. So we did have it on our calendar for as a tentative date. And we'll let you know if we have any applications tomorrow moving forward to see if we can get a quorum to make sure before moving forward. Otherwise, we wouldn't have a meeting till December. So, Okay. Thank you. Again, I want to thank your members who have... public who attended here. This is what we have these meetings for, to get input to help us make our decisions or our recommendations. So I applaud you for taking your time to come down here and express your thoughts on that. And with that, the meeting is adjourned.